Good day everyone, I am Wala Cizel and I'm going to discuss the internal control, its control objectives, its modifying principles, as well as its related models. The establishment and maintenance of an adequate internal control system is needed by law for organization management. According to the Securities and Exchange Commission, establishing and maintaining an internal control system is a critical management responsibility. The responsibility or the ability to provide shareholders with reasonable assurance that the business is adequately governed is a critical component of management's stewardship obligation. Management also has a responsibility to provide timely and accurate financial information to shareholders and potential investors. That is why internal control system, which is an accounting system, means all policies and procedures or internal controls adopted by the management of the entity to achieve or to assist in achieving management's objective of ensuring as far as practicable, orderly, and efficient conduct of its business, safeguarding of assets, prevent prevention and detection of fraud and error, accuracy and completeness of accounting records, and timely pre preparation of reliable financial information. The internal control system goes beyond those matters which directly relate to the functions of the accounting system. And under this internal control system is what we call the internal control. According to Asuncion, Yena, and Scala, internal control is a process affected by those charged with governance, management, and other personnel designed to provide reasonable assurance regarding the achievement of objectives in the following categories. First, the effectiveness and efficiency of operations, which is what we call operational objective. Second, the reliability of financial reporting or the reporting objective. And lastly, the compliance with applicable laws and regulations or known as the compliance objective. Internal control can only provide reasonable assurance no matter how well designed and operated it is. It is because of the inherent limitations that may affect the effective effectiveness of internal controls. Kasali sa mga limitations na, na ito ang tinatawag na kutsa. First, the cost-benefit consideration where management usual requirement is that the control must be cost-effective. Second, management overriding the control where there is a possibility that a person are responsible for exercising control could abuse that responsibility. Second is the uh, circumvention through collusion. It is the possibility uh, of circumvention of controls through collusion of individuals or collusion with parties outside the entity or with employees in the entity. Next is the uh, changes in condition where there is a po possibility that the uh, uh, the procedures may become inadequate due to changing conditions and the Compliance with procedures may deteriorate. Next is the human error due to carelessness, uh, distraction, mistakes of judgment, or misunderstanding in uh, misunderstanding of instructions. And lastly, the anticipated uh, types of transactions, where in the fact or where where the fact that most controls tend to be directed at anticipated, anticipated types or routines of transactions and not the usual uh, routine transactions or non-routine transactions. Accountants are important contributors in establishing control adequacy since most of the internal control system is related to transaction processing. 
at ngayon alamin natin kung ano ang naging history ng internal control. Kasunod ng pag-crash ng stock market at ang pandaidigang pandaraya sa pinansyal ni Evar Cuegar, ang legislator ng US ay gumawa o nakpasa ng dalawang hakbang upang may balik ang tiwala sa capital market. Ang una ay ang tinawag na Securities Act of 1933 na may dalawang pangunahing layunin. First, to require that investors receive financial and other significant information concerning securities being offered for public sale and to prohibit deceit, misrepresentations, and other fraud in the sale of securities. Ang kalawa ay ang tinatawag na Securities Exchange Act of 1934 which created the Securities and Exchange Commission and empowered Securities and Exchange Commission with broad authority over all aspects of the securities industry including the authority regarding auditing standards. Securities and Exchange Commission Acts also requires all publicly uh, traded companies to be audited by an independent auditor such as a CPA and requires also all companies to report the SEC in order to maintain a system of internal control that is evaluated as part of the annual external audit. Next is the copyright law in 1976. Ang batas na ito ay nagkaroon ng maraming pagbabago, nagdagdag ng software at iba pang intelektual na may kaugnayan sa mga umiiral na batas sa proteksyon ng copyright. It is of concern sa mga IT auditors dahil nga personal na pinananagot ang management para sa mga paglabag tulad ng uh, software piracy if raided by the police by the software police at kung may makitang sufficient evidence of impropriety internal control responsibilities have not always been met by the corporate management internal control issues which were previously of little concern to investors, became a public concern after it was discovered that the U.S. company executives were using their organization's funds to bribe foreign officials. At dahil nga sa isyong ito, dumating ang pagpasa ng Foreign Corrupt Practices Act of 1977. Kabilang sa mga provision nito na ang mga kumpanyang nakarehistro sa SEC na gawin o sundin ang mga sumusunod. First, to keep records that fairly and reasonably reflect the transactions of the firm and its financial position, and to maintain a system of internal control that provides reasonable assurance that the organization's objectives are met. The FCPA has had a profound impact on the organization's management. That is why managers are more concerned about control adequacy now that they know that violating FCPA can result in significant fines and imprisonment. Kasunod ng mga serye ng mga skandalo sa S&L noong 1980s, ang S&L crisis o skandal ay isang mabagal na sakon na sa pinansyal kung saan dumating ito sa ulo at nagresulta ng paggabigo ng halos ang katlo na 3,234 savings at loan associations sa US sa pagitan ng 1986 at 1995. Kung kaya't isang komite ang nabuo upang tugunan ang mga panulokong ito. Originally, kinuha ng komite ang pangalang Treatway, ngunit sa, sa huli, Ang proyekto ay naging COSO o Committee of Sponsoring Organizations. Kasama sa mga organisasyong nag-sponsor ang Financial Executives International o ang FEI, Institute of Management Accountants or IMA, the American Accounting Associations, IPA at IIA. A response was drafted by the committee over a period of years. The committee decided to concentrate on an effective model for internal controls from a management perspective because it was found early on that strong internal controls were the best prevention to, pr to fraud. And as a result of this process, a COSO model emerged. So ICBA adopted this model into auditing standards and published 
SAS number 78, the consideration of internal control in a financial statement audit. Bilang resulta ng ilang malalaking pandaraya sa pinansyal tulad ng Enron, Worldcom, Adelphia at iba pa, at ang mga resultang pagkalugi na dinanas sa mga stockholders, ang presyon ay dinala ng U.S. Congress upang, ma upang maprotektahan ang publiko mula sa mga naturang kaganapan. Kung kaya't humantong ito sa pagpasa ng Sarbanes-Oxley Act noong July 30, 2002. This law in, in general encourages measures to strengthen corporate governance, internal controls, and audit quality in order to boost public confidence in capital markets. In particular, it demands public firms management to put in place an adequate system of internal controls over their financial reporting process. The internal control system of an organization consists of rules, practices, and procedures that are designed to meet the four main objectives. These four main objectives are to safeguard assets of the firm, to ensure reliability and accuracy of the accounting records and information, to promote efficiency in the firm's operations, and to measure the compliance with management's prescribed policies and procedure. Embedded in the internal control objectives are the four modifying principles that govern designers and auditors of internal control system. First, we have the management responsibility wherein management is responsible in establishing and maintaining internal control system and to maintain and in order to maintain effective internal controls, management should maintain adequate policies and procedures, communicate these policies and procedures, and to monitor compliance with policies and practices. This principle is supported by the FCPA. However, service Oxley leg legislation makes it a law. Next, we have the methods of data processing. Despite uh, the methods or despite those data processing methods being employed or utilized, whether manual or computer-based, the system of inter internal control must met the four main objectives. Nonetheless, different technology or different sorts of technology will require different ways to reach these goals. Next, we have the limitations. So as I have mentioned from the previous slides, um, internal control can only provide reasonable assurance because of inherent limitations. So every internal control system has its limitations on effectiveness. So kasalin dito yung possibility of error wherein no system is perfect. Circumvention where personnel may circumvent the system through collusion or other means. So uh, merong uh, pandarayang nagaganap sa system or the uh, through through employee collusion so this employee collusion are group of group of employees working in unison or working together that may alter or change the financial and other financial data and other management information uh in a way na hindi ma-detect ng control system. Next, the management override wherein the management or uh, management is in a relation or is in a position to override the control procedures by personally distorting the system or distorting the transactions or by directing a subordinate to do so. So, it is for personal gain or advantage why high-ranking officials or or employees may be able to circumvent established policies and procedures. Lastly, the changing uh, conditions. Because of the changing conditions, those existing effective controls may become ineffective over time. Last but not the least is the principle of reasonable assurance. 
internal control system need to provide reasonable assurance that the four major internal control objectives are being satisfied. And according to this logic, the expense of having better control should not outweigh the benefits. This figure illustrates the limitations and reasonable assurance principles. The internal control system is depicted as a control shield that protects the firm's asset from a variety of unfavorable circumstances. Unauthorized access of the firm's assets, including information, a fraud committed by both inside and outside the firm, errors caused by employees' incompetence, faulty computer programs and corrupted input data, and malicious acts such as unauthorized access by computer hackers and threats from computer viruses that destroy programs and databases, controls that are lacking or having weaknesses is or are presented as a holes presented as holes in a control shield in a feature. Some flaws are insignificant and tolerated, and these flaws may not be worth correcting under the principle of reasonable assurance. On the other hand, material flaws in controls raise the firm's risk of financial loss or injury as a result of the unfavorable circumstances. The benefits obtained should outweigh the costs in addressing these flaws. So this figure illustrates the internal control uh, shield that depicts or that is portrayed from the previous slide in action in which controls are divided or categorized into three categories, preventive, detective, and corrective controls. And this figure is what we call the PDC control model. Preventive controls is the first line of defense in the control structure. These are, these are strategies that are used passively to limit the incidence of unfavorable events. It compels adherence to a desired or specific, specified actions, thereby, thereby filtering out anomalous events. At this level, the vast majority of unpleasant outcomes can be prevented. An example of a preventive control is a well is a well designed data entry screen where the logical structure of the of the screen is in the zone allows only specific data entry, such as the customer's name, address. A thing sold and amount forces the data entry clerk to input the required data and prohibits it from being deleted. The second line of defense is the detective controls. Detective controls are devices, techniques, and procedures para ma identify o ma determine at saka ma expose those undesirable events na nag-ilud or nag-avert dun sa preventive controls. By comparing actual occurrences to a predetermined structure or predetermined standard, a det detective control uh, detects different sorts of errors. When a detective control detects a deviation or departure of a standard, An alarm is sounded to draw attention to the situation. An example of detective control is uh, nag-alarm ang detective control for the reason na yung amount na na-input as debit ay, ay hindi equal sa credit na na-input or vice versa. Lastly is the corrective control, which is actually the one who fixes the problem detected by the detective control. An example of this is the action of adjusting or a correct, uh, yeah, an action of adjusting entries to a to an erroneous um, accounts used in the 
uh, used in entering in the journal entry. Next model is the COSO internal framework. It comprises of the five components, the control environment, the risk assessment, information, and communication, monitoring, and control activities. In the control environment, it provides as the foundation for the other four control components. It sets the pace for the business and has an impact on management and staff control awareness. Kasali sa mga important elements ay ang the, integrate, the integrity and ethical values of management, the structure of the organization, the participation of the organization's board of directors and the audit committee, if one exists, the management's philosophy and operating style, the procedures for delegating responsibility and authority, the management's uh, methods for assessing performance, external influences such as examinations by regulatory agencies, the organization's policies and practices for managing its human resources. So, the second one is the risk assessment. So, para ma-determine, ma-analyze, at ma-manage ang risks, kailangan ng mga organization or organization na mag-conduct ng risk assessment that is relevant for or that is relevant sa financial reporting. Risks ay maaaring uh, nangyari o babago bi, uh, bilang resulta ng mga kaganapan tulad ng uh, changes in operating environment that is or that impose new or change competitive pressures dun sa firm. New personnel who have a different or inadequate understanding of internal control. New or re-engineered systems that affect transaction processing significant and rapid growth that uh, stains or that strains existing internal controls internal controls in introduction of new product lines or activities with which the organization has little experience organizational restructuring which result in the reduction and or reallocation of personnel such a, such that business operations and transactions uh, pressure and transaction processing are affected. Entrance to foreign uh, markets that may impact the operations, that is, the risks association, uh, the risk associated with foreign currency transactions. And lastly, the adoption of new accounting principle that impacts the preparation of financial statements. Third is the information and communication. So, the accounting information system of an organization is critical to its operations, decision-making, and the preparation of accurate financial statement. The capacity of the management to take actions and make decisions or choices in connection with the company's operations is influenced by the quality of the information supplied by the system. At ang effective accounting information system ay to identify and record all valid transactions, to provide timely information about transactions in sufficient detail, to permit proper classification and financial reporting, to accurately measure the financial value ng uh, transactions so their effects can be recorded in financial statement and to accurately record transactions in the time period in which they occurred. Next is the monitoring. Monitoring is a process of assessing the quality of internal control performance over time. It involves assessing the des design and operations of controls on a timely basis and taking necessary corrective actions. So, it is done to ensure that controls continue to operate effectively and it can be accomplished through ongoing monitoring activities, which is performed by persons with the same line fun uh, function, separate evaluations, which is per performed by internal auditors, audit committee, and or external auditors, or pwedeng combination ng dalawa. 
And lastly is the control activities. So these are the policies and procedures to help ensure that the engage management direction directives rather are carried out and is group into and it is group into two the physical control and the IT control. Pag sinabing uh, physical control, ito yung mga controls that relates to human activities that is employed in the accounting system. These are activities that are purely manual. Kasali na dito ang uh, yung transaction or author authorization. Transaction authorization. Kung saan ang purpose nito is to ensure na lahat ng material transactions processed by the information system are valid at in accordance sa objectives sa management. Uh, isa sa mga important control activities ay ang uh, segregation of duties. So, in which it is intended to reduce or minimize incompatible fun functions or duties. Mm, in a small, and in a small organization with small number of employees and separation of five incompatible tasks among three employees is impossible. So, close supervision is required to compensate for the uh, deficiency or for the lack of segregation measures. And that is why supervision is often a compensating control. An organization's accounting records are made up of source documents, journals, and ledgers. And these records provide an audit trail of economic events by capturing the economic essence of transactions. Access, access controls are also used to ensure that only author, authorized personnel have access to a company's assets. Assets are vulnerable to misuse, damage, and theft when they are accused without, when they are assessed without authorization. As a result, access controls are critical for asset protection. Meron din tinatawag na IT control, where modern organizations' financial reporting processes are driven by information technology. Financial transactions are initiated, authorized, recorded, and reported via automated systems. So this chapter uh, serves as a primer on IT auditing and set the tone for the rest of the book. We started by outlining the different types of audits and differentiating the traditional attestation role of the auditor and the growing field of advisory services. The structure of an IT audit was explained as well as the management claims, uh, audit objectives, control tests, and substantive testing. The COSO control structure which defines the internet controls in both manual and IT environments was also addressed in this chapter.